Do you know what's absolutely terrifying? Cars and trucks on fire. Driving past the truck on the side of the road that's fully engulfed in flames is literally the type of shit that'll haunt your nightmares. And believe it or not, it's not as hard to do as one might think. I mean, after all, you are driving around this big old hunk of metal with fuel and flammable materials and plenty of airflow to turn even the smallest of sparks into a roaring ball of flames. One of, if not the biggest cause of automotive fires though, is this neat little thing that we call improper electrical wiring. I'm Dustin, Dusty.co on Instagram if that's your thing. And in today's video, we're gonna be sitting down to go over some mistakes that you should avoid when installing your new lighting products. Let's get it. As we dive into the wire nuts and T-taps of this one, I gotta remind you guys, right? If you're looking for some awesome lighting products for your truck, then, you know, look no further than Morimoto. Best part about it is if you're looking for Morimoto headlights and tail lights and even their brand new super awesome four banger fog lights that you can get those at customoffsets.com. You guys already know it. We got a ton of their stuff in the warehouse ready to ship to you. Meaning that, you know, if you're looking for that final touch for your truck for show season, right? Because let's face it, show season's here. If you're down south, then we got you covered. Don't worry. Also, drop a comment down below of the biggest rookie that you guys have seen someone make when installing lighting. All right, there's the plug. Take it or leave it. Let's get into mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes that we see people make, especially up here in the north when they're installing their lighting, is not thinking about our good old pal rust when they install any sort of new lighting stuff, right? Typically speaking here, when you install new lights, they usually are gonna come with some sort of brackets. Now these brackets are gonna have to get bolted to your truck in some way, and this is especially true when it comes to fog lights, for example, which are usually gonna sit on some sort of little metal hanger bracket thing, so that way you can mount them in your bumper. The issue isn't the bracket. The issue here is that when you're not selective on what kind of hardware you're gonna be using, you're in for a bad time. This cooler thing called salt, and water because salt melts snow and it turns into water and then sprays all over your truck, right? All of that can cause your brackets to corrode your hardware to get all rusty. It looks like shit. it's hard to take apart. It's just not fun. Furthermore, if you're doing any kind of drilling into a body panel to install any sort of bracket for lighting, it's a good idea to keep in mind that you're gonna wanna cover that hole with some sort of rust inhibitor, either paint or underbody coating or PUR15 or something to take care of it. The idea is just to make sure that the metal is protected after you install your new lighting products so you don't end up having rust, you know, tear through the whole roof of your truck after you install a new set of cab lights. Side note, installing cab lights, it's a bit terrifying because you're like just drilling holes in your roof. Yeah. Another big mistake we've seen is not properly looming your wire when it's installed. Now, I hear what you're saying. Typically, wiring has some sort of insulation around it. And while sure, that maybe is enough to protect it a little bit, it's not gonna do the whole job that you're looking for. It does do an okay job of protecting your newly ran wires, you know, in terms of like rubbing and chafing, that's really the only goal of that stuff though, is to prevent a short in case two wires are laid next to each other. The issue here is that as you drive your truck down the road, it's gonna move, it's gonna shake, it's gonna bump, it's gonna rattle, and it's otherwise just gonna cause vibrations. That's just what happens because you're rolling on 14 wide down the road, you know, like I was this summer. And anytime that you have wires against metal, you have a chance for this wire insulation to chafe. Now chafed wires are gonna equal wire shorts and wire shorts are going to equal burnt fuses if you installed one. Otherwise it can just mean a whole lot of damage in terms of vehicle fires. It's spicy. For this reason, the best thing you can do when installing a bunch of new wiring is make sure that you're gonna isolate that. If you're running a lot of wires across your engine bay, for example, it's a good idea to wrap them up in a wire loom and then you can just piece it across the top there. It looks really good and it'll keep your wires safe. If you're pulling wires through your firewall, make sure that you're protecting those by running them through a rubber grommet, right? Because again, you don't want that bare metal right on top of the wire. It's just gonna chew it up. It's not a good time. All of this is ultimately gonna help ensure that your truck is wired up correctly and it's gonna keep you from having any sort of issues later on down the road. And perhaps, if not, the single-handed biggest freaking mistake that we see guys and gals make if they're new to wiring up lighting on their truck is using improper wire connectors to do the job. Now listen, I know about this one because 18 year old me was this guy. I had a 1992 GMC Sierra 1500 and I had nine 
LED lights all around the diamond plate toolbox that I had in my truck. It looked like a semi truck rolling down the road. And let me tell you, in terms of wiring, it was not great. I literally ran a wire from the toolbox down the bed cap and then T-tapped into the tail light to bring power to it out of the running lights. And then inside of it, I just ran like one hot power all the way over to the far light and then just T-tapped every single light into it. It was not good. They worked half the time. The wiring looked terrible. It was just not good. We get the allure when it comes to wiring your truck lighting, right? T-taps are easy. They're just a really simple way to tie into existing wiring and, you know, are overall easy peasy to use. With that being said though, there are quite a few drawbacks to T-taps that you guys should know before you get started. Number one, T-taps are bulky. They take up a lot of space, which means that if you're working in a tighter space, like inside of a mirror, for example, or wiring up your radio, then it can be difficult to hide that whole rat's nest of wiring with all those T-taps on it. The biggest drawback though is that T-taps are not weather resistant. This means that they're just open and they allow moisture and dirt to get into the connection right of where the wires are spliced together, which ultimately can just mean that it's gonna really up your new lighting. Electricity and water don't mix. That's how you get shorts. It's not good. Instead of T-taps though, there are a few good ways to connect your new lighting. If you're looking to tie two wire ends together, for example, then butt connectors, pretty much a solid option. They're pretty much standard in the industry and they just work great. Just remember to get a heat shrinkable one if it's going to be a connection on the outside of the vehicle, again, to keep that moisture out of the wires. Another really great way to tie into existing wires is using what's known as the wire wrap method. This can be done by removing a small section of the wire insulation that you're tapping into and then wrapping your new wire around it and then you're done. It's simple. Once you've done that, just go ahead and tape it up good, right? So that way you don't get any sort of issues with water in the connection and bingo, bango, bongo, you are all set. You're wired up and ready to go. This is how we did my running lights in my mirrors. It was really simple. Wilson helped me out with it, it was great. What's your biggest wiring mistake that you've made or you've seen a buddy make? Let us know down in the comments section below and as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that, I'm Dustin and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.